Hey guys, good afternoon. I'm Tony with HVAC Explained. I am currently working on a fork truck right next to me, a heavy piece of machinery. Believe it or not, I'm working on air conditioning. There is an air conditioning compressor in here that's locked up. It's set up the exact same way as an automobile. Okay, there is a condenser, there's an evaporator, there's a compressor. Okay, it's used to keep the occupant cool during hot summertime months. Now, that compressor I was told is locked up by the customer. I am simply told to recover the gas out, which is 134A, just like an automobile. They're going to pull out the compressor and change it. I'm going to simply pressure test with nitrogen, pull a vacuum, and then weigh in that exact same gas I just pulled out. So, the one thing about air conditioning, you don't know what to expect next. You could be working on a piece of machinery like this. You could be working on a window unit. You could even be working on a chiller the size of an 18-wheeler. So I've been doing heating and air now, commercial, industrial, 17 years, residential, year and a half, almost two years. I'm currently 38, okay? So basically half my life I've been doing heating and air conditioning. It's a very good field to get into. You always need heating, cooling, refrigeration. We always need technicians. We need good, reliable technicians, okay? So make yourself aware of the equipment, safety, and how to work on it. Okay, but it's all relatively, it's the same. It's just different applications like this. So I will be pulling a vacuum currently with my vacuum pump, making this cylinder, this recovery cylinder, clean and dry and in a vacuum to remove any contaminants and moisture out of this cylinder. I'm gonna pull out the refrigerant from inside the system, put it all inside here. They're gonna come in, change that compressor for me because that's their their side. Then I'm gonna pressure test with nitrogen, pull vacuum, and then weigh it back in. Okay guys, believe it or not, this typical residential system for your home system does not work on automobiles. You must use an adapter, okay? It simply pulls back, locks on, and goes back on. But it can go back into your gauge, so you can reuse your hoses for this. Okay, like so, on there. Okay, now we gotta do the suction side. Okay, suction side. Believe it or not, refrigerant can be lost from these fittings with O-rings leaking inside. Okay, there's our ports. Set your caps aside so you don't lose them. Like I was just about, I'll put them on my cart. Okay, let's put our gauges on. Get my skinny hands in here. Okay guys. So we do have pressure in the system. We currently have our gauges on those ports. Now we're gonna simply just go ahead and crack both sides to make sure there is no air in these lines. So gently, I tighten them up pretty good, I'm sorry. Or do it this way. Go. What that did, that pulled any air that could have possibly been in the hose out because air is very bad for your system. Okay guys, we are next hooked up to our cylinder. Zero that out. I went from the center hose, which goes to our recovery machine. Okay, at this time there is no refrigerant in this line. I'm going to go ahead, open up our valves, both sides is fine. Okay, open them up. Then refrigerant is all the way up inside of here at this time. We're going to crack this hose with the valve shut. You'll hear, hear air come out. Coming out, coming out, coming out. Believe it or not, you'll smell a little bit of that Freon coming out, refrigerant. Some people call it Freon. Okay, here we go. Now, go 
ahead open up our valve fully and then we can go ahead and open up our tank. I generally wait till it's done hissing before I go ahead and turn on my machine. Let the let the system pull it out by itself. And we will turn this on in a minute. Okay guys, we got half a pound out. Looking good. Looking good everybody. Sometimes I generally like to look around at things. What could be wrong with this? See, that's never good when your connecting rod comes out the side of the engine block. Not good. <laughs> Man. Imagine driving this uh, probably uh, forklift and have that blow out at you. Bam. going keep it going so your compressor is locked up this should be moving with my hands okay we're at basically a pound and three quarters we're already down into a vacuum we want to go ahead and close off our gauges okay close our gauges then we want to simply slowly pump out the recovery machine That pumps out whatever left gas is inside of here. You go ahead and valve that off, off, and save this for future use, which will be right after the guys replace the compressor. So they are mechanics. Um, I'm confident they will get that done just perfectly fine. So, okay, I'm gonna disconnect, see if you guys can see in here. Let's try to get my skinny hands in here. I'm gonna grab on top. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, let me move my stuff out of the way and let the guys do their job while I take another service call up at this facility. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Okay guys, after when that compressor is changed, you wanna go ahead, reconnect your hoses up, open up your valves. I'm gonna go in through the suction side first actually. And I'm gonna dump in some dry nitrogen. The reason why I'm going through the one side, I want to verify that my gauge is hooked up properly. Let me zoom in here. How are you doing? What's up, buddy? Uh, just adding some nitrogen to this. I'm pressure testing it. They just put a new compressor in. I had to run out and grab some parts for the uh, that series. chiller, that chiller over there. Yeah, we're holding. Okay. Okay, guys. So I'm using my leak detector okay and just spraying it on those fittings okay my gauges here as you can see there are no bubbles so we are good um, not pressurizing with a whole lot of pressure here just because this is uh, 134a so our pressures generally are not that high so just 200 psi is just fine and I'm gonna go ahead and release this and then follow up with the vacuum pump Okay guys, our gauges are still hooked up. Our hoses are nice and snug. Got the vacuum pump here. Turn it on. We're gonna wait till this gets down around 500 microns or less. So we're just gonna give it some time. I gotta go replace a coupling on another unit. Okay guys, we are currently down in a deep vacuum. Typically this vacuum pump will start chiming when it's good and done with but we are good. We are down below 500 microns. Okay, 235, that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my recovery machine in reverse and pump all this refrigerant back in 100%. So here we go. Okay guys, we can go ahead and valve it off. Valve it off. Sorry, I'm in a little bit of a rush here. Okay, we are valved off. We can go ahead and shut off our vacuum pump. We can go ahead and disconnect. 
our quick connect, shut off our power. Then I'm gonna stick it on the outlet of my recovery machine to pump in refrigerant. You can do it by itself and let it charge up, but I'm gonna do it this way because I'm in a bit of a rush, like I said. Okay, so currently off. I'm gonna open her up, that is the liquid side, okay. Okay, zero it out. We are coming in, we have liquid all the way to here. We're gonna go ahead and stick that open like so. Then with our valves shut, with our valve shut, we're gonna go ahead. Okay, I can hear some refrigerant. There we go. Now we can go ahead and open up our high side. Oops, I'm sorry. And you can see it's climbing in the suction side as well. That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to let the thing do its job and then I'll turn on my recovery machine here. I got to plug her in. Okay, guys, I am pumping it in. Pumping it in. Going, going, going. Make sure that's wide open too. All open. Drop my stuff. Looks like this thing's contaminated for life. Yeah, and it gets colder, so it's taking some time to get out that last little bit of vapor. And then once it's in, I'm going to go ahead and pop off my gauges so he can start this motor because I'm uh, a little unsure about moving parts on this um, particular device. But we will check air temperature coming out so inside this cab. So there's your EVAP up in the back, blows in through these ducts. Guys, we're just about there. We're gonna valve off. We can pump out what's left in these hoses and in the machine. Valve off. Shut her down. We're we'll gonna disconnect our hoses. Okay. And then we can go ahead and take our gauges off and let this gentleman start up this engine and let's see if it cools. Okay guys, that brand new compressor is in and running. Now, I didn't want to stick my hands in here. I know, yeah, I probably could, but this is something I'm not too familiar with. I don't want to stick my hands in there. It's not worth it. Um, we don't have too much airflow, not too much, but 69 degrees and it's about 85 in here right now. So it's coming out kind of cool, but they got to check out their squirrel cage up under the seat. You have to rip apart this whole assembly, unbolt the floor, uh, it's a big ordeal. Um, so, but compressor's working. That's all done. We're good on our end. I'll let their uh, maintenance shop take care of the rest because that's what I was told to do. Just change the compressor, uh, pull the gas out, put the new gas in after the um, compressor was changed. So there you go, guys. Have a good day. Stay safe.